IBM, helping people to share information around the world, is pleased to have made this program possible. The creative spirit. Great ideas to build new communities. In this hour, Patty Duke and Marley Maplin. Stonecutters create a community by building a cathedral. Women in Texas work together to raise their children. James Earl Jones with the immortal words of Charles Dickens. A school in Sweden where children sing to save a Costa Rican rainforest. Nature's own secrets of creativity. sharing their time with those who need it, and dance as a way of bringing people together. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. Community, by definition, isn't made up of the same people. Community is made up of different people. I mean, community is made up of men and women. How much more different can you get? Community is made up of black and white. Community is made up of African and English, of Japanese and Vietnamese. You see, I mean, you're made up of the differences that are always at war, but you know, that's... That's life. I mean, I'm saying that in inverted commas. I mean, whenever you have differences, then you have to have reconciliations, and you have to, you, you will have conflicts. You have to have conflicts and difference. But without these conflicts, you do not have creativity. Community is the kind of source bed of creativity. The creativity is what makes life meaningful and exciting for people. And I don't necessarily mean the creativity of producing a great artistic masterpiece. I mean the creativity of dealing with life in an imaginative way where you're trying to solve problems that are, very, that are moving you forward instead of moving you back or keeping you in the same place. But even more profoundly, creativity is, is absolutely essential at the societal level. We live now in an age where things are changing very rapidly. The environment's changing. We're dealing with new societies and new, new cultures all the time, and we have to constantly be adapting. Every human being is born with creativity, with a natural need and ability to create a meaningful life for themselves and a community with others. This program is about great and small acts of creativity that help us heal ourselves and heal others. Creativity lives on throughout life, from childhood to old age. And like nature herself, creativity is continually reborn. Canyon in Sedona, Arizona. It's a place where we can discover some lessons about creativity that are very unusual. So this is kind of a textbook. It's a, a very wondrous place and a place where we can reach deep down into nature and discover those powerful urges to create that exist in everything in nature and in every one of us.
what happened here in Sedona about five million years ago was that the crust of the earth opened up and this canyon dropped down 700 feet and it exposed all these layers of rock. So we can see that play of creativity over gigantic epochs of time. What you see is a three-phase process. In the beginning, nature or a human being is very, very divergent, exploring a lot of possibilities, trying to find new opportunities for growth. So there was that experimentation, that entrepreneurial period of finding out what worked in this particular environment. All kinds of grasses and bushes and trees came into the canyon. After experimenting, it moves into what we call a second phase. Mesquite, manzanita, juniper trees, just a few took over and created their own pattern. And they started to literally eat up the canyon. They moved, they marched across the canyon as they reproduced themselves and pushed everything else out of the way. Anything that didn't fit was just grown over. It was a very successful pattern, and life really exploited this canyon very successfully. But after a long time, the trees got in each other's way. They started literally to kill each other. But they had prepared the way. Their very failure was their success because they had created here in the canyon a new kind of environment, a new kind of soil. They had en enriched it by their own success and their death. And then the third phase came in. third phase of creativity is dramatically different than the first or the second phase. It's not that invention, it's not the improvement and extension of a pattern, it's where an old and successful pattern starts to open up, it destructures, and new things start to come in. New partnerships are made, and I guess that's one of the biggest words in the third phase, is bringing in things that didn't fit and making them partners in the system. It was a very exciting period. All kinds of new species came in and created an interdependent ecology in the canyon where they made room for each other and lived in harmony and were constantly exploiting new opportunities to express life in this environment. We really inherit the past, but nature demands that we create the future. And this is what's happening here and it happens in our lives. It happens in a single cell in the, in the stream in Oak Creek in 30 minutes. And it may happen in our mind over the course of, a, of an hour or two in generating an idea and finding that pattern and finding out what works and trying it out and then finally incorporating and synthesizing new elements. The process of creativity, those three phases, goes on and repeats itself continually throughout nature in organizations, from the entrepreneur to the very stable company that doesn't tolerate anything that rocks the boat to our personal lives and how we handle our own creativity as we go through life from day to day. We've seen the Earth from the moon and we have this new image of, of a totality, of a unity. I don't think we've had that image since the Middle Ages. And therefore, people are grasping they're really grasping for language, and they're grasping for symbols, and they're grasping for institutions that can somehow embody this radical interdependence of everything. Now, you see that interdependence when you're on the moon looking at the Earth. You see it all together. 
But what's an institution that, that, that can celebrate that? And I think that if they didn't have a cathedral, they'd have to invent one because that's what a cathedral started to do. Well, the medieval cathedral, and by that I mean the cathedral of the late 12th and 13th and into the 14th century, really is a special high watermark in history because those cathedrals like Notre Dame de Paris and Chartres and Westminster Abbey, those really big, big cathedrals, um, were built at the same time that cities came into being. And then with the opening up of the trade routes, cities formed, and that was the end of feudalism and the beginning, really, of a new age. And the cathedrals mirror that new vitality. And it really uh, tried to, to be a place in which, first of all, the whole city could gather. Now, that was a new idea. A cathedral was a place in which uh, the, the government, the politics, the economics, the science, the thought, the works of compassion, the works of art, and ultimately the work of worship, all took place in the same, in, in, in the same space. Another thing, a cathedral, if it's alive, is always sort of a work in progress. It's not a finished thing. It's, it's, it's like life itself. It's constantly evolving and making mistakes and changing and reevaluating and going ahead. And to understanding where we are and what our problems are and how those problems can be solved. Virtually everything we've got here is from the Hudson River, from the ponds, in and around the city. So... You're actually discovering your neighbors here? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Also, there are a lot of diatoms around it. How many cathedrals have salt marshes in them? And the salt marsh is, for me, a kind of symbol of a rediscovery of nature that has got to become part of the language of every school child in New York. And through that salt marsh, they are able to go around and discover the salt marshes that are still left in New York before they're developed out of existence. So here is again, sacred and secular, science and religion, absolutely um, hand in hand. And that is the ancient tradition of what a cathedral is. The creative community is global. It reaches from a small school in rural Sweden to the rainforests of Costa Rica. This is a story of a little seed of an idea which is helping to save a great forest. A group of children hear that the rainforests are being destroyed, that animals are dying. They get a creative idea. Save the rainforest by buying it, they tell their teacher. She doesn't laugh. She listens. disappearing in a very, very fast rate. And they have been thinking, we never get a chance to see it, because when we are grown and can go there and it's gone. Mm, 
Oh, it started about two and a half a year ago with a boy in my class made a suggestion that why can't we buy some rainforest? And what she was thinking was to buy rainforest to preserve it so it would be there to visit when they become grown. <laughs> and then all the children thought it was a very good idea and let's start raising money to buy rainforest and I didn't know what to do because I didn't know how to just buy rainforest like it was a good idea but then just by accident three years later I met uh, an American professor who made research in an area called, called Monte Verde in Costa Rica. And she knew that they had a project to raise money to buy rainforest to make it a reserve. So she came and visited the children and showed them pictures of the forest that they could buy. And they were so excited and said, let's start raising money and buy as much as we can. We have some different activities to raise money to buy rainforest. We had pony riding, dog jumping and rabbit jumping, for example. <laughs> and then the children sang songs that they have made themselves because they like to sing and as there are no songs about rainforest they just made them. I should have said you're too small, it's not possible, but I didn't. They say that if we start, we can only buy a little, little piece. But if we start and show others, perhaps they will help us, and then it can be a bigger piece. And perhaps we can be very, very many. And then it, it would be worth the work, because then we can save them for it. And if children in all countries around the world raise money to preserve rainforests, then we will succeed, and then we'll be, there will be men, much rainforest left where we are grown, and not only little peas. That was their big vision. If you have a problem, talk to the children and ask them for solutions and try them. That will change the world. Helen Keller, who lived in darkness and silence, remembered talking to a friend who had just returned from a long walk in the woods. When she asked her friend what she had observed, her friend replied, Nothing in particular. I wondered how it was possible to walk for an hour through the woods and see nothing of note. I, who cannot see, find hundreds of things. The delicate symmetry of a leaf, the smooth skin of a silver birch, the rough, shaggy bark of a pine. I, who am blind, can give one hint to those who see. Use your eyes as if tomorrow you would be stricken blind. Hear the music of voices, the song of a bird, the mighty strains of an orchestra, as if you would be stricken deaf tomorrow. Touch each object as if tomorrow your tactile sense would fail. Smell the perfume of flowers, taste with relish 
each morsel as if tomorrow you could never smell and taste again. Make the most of every sense. Glory in all the facets of pleasure and beauty which the world reveals to you. The kind of creativity and extending nature that we've been doing for so long of looking at this kind of at the surface of things and extending that and expanding it is is not working for us as well today as it once did. We need to look at the deeper dynamics, the more powerful dynamics in nature. And right here in this wilderness, we run into the, one of the most ordinary and extraordinary examples of nature's really most profound process of creativity. What you see here is a uh, lichen. You, we see them everywhere. We see them in the Arctic and in the jungles. You see them in your backyard. And the lichen is absolutely wonderful. It, it can live out here in this wilderness and thrive. And how does it do it? It does it because the lichen, millions of years ago, two very different kinds of organisms got together and made a partnership. A and B got together and made C, which was far more than either A or B. Uh, algae and fungus made this extraordinary partnership. Now, neither algae nor fungus can live out here. But together, they share their differentness. They enrich each other by being so different and bringing that together and inventing something extraordinarily new and, and transcending anything that came from the past. Now, that's a... That's a process. It's called mutualistic symbiosis. We like to call it partnering today. It's, it is where we reach out beyond the, the commonalities, beyond the surface, and into that enrichment that we can find in diversity and bring that together, and in bringing it together, transcend anything that we could have imagined that could have come from the past. That means different people coming together, man and God coming together, God and the universe coming together. I mean, the communion of all things. I mean, that's the sort of image of heaven in which we are all in this most intimate sharing and relationship and actually entering into each other's lives. New York, like most modern cities, is convulsed by some very killing problems huge implosions of population, and mostly of very poor people. That's not a new idea, but the scale of it now is, is, is overwhelming New York. And therefore, things like homelessness and out-of-workness and out-of-schoolness, I mean, all of these things are sort of inevitable realities of this situation. So one of the biggest things that the cathedral can do is try and open its doors and its heart and its brain and its perception to this, I mean, to really be engaged with this. And uh, in look at this programmatically, the biggest part of our money at the cathedral, of our budget, goes towards programs that are trying to train young people, to motivate young people, to get young people off of drugs, off of the streets, into areas that motivate them and can lift them. Many of our folks have been really at the bottom of this new kind of urban situation. And for them to now see this project of learning these skills and their hard skills to learn but it's something that, that they can be proud of and it can really be theirs. Well, that's, to me, an immense kind of breakthrough and a very important thing. Eddie Pizarro started with us, coming from a, a family with just a million problems, and he's really been at every level of that whole program, and now he's the boss of it. See this stone here? This word here, imagine, a couple of years ago, that's what I imagined I'd be doing. I told myself, imagine me running this place and teaching guys how to work.
nurture, which is what I'm doing, nursing the guys, you know, teaching them to trade and helping them succeed in life. See this whole, this whole bump you got over here? Huh? From here to here, see all that roughness? Yeah. Gotta get it out, okay? That's how you get it out. Same time, okay? And you get it all out, real nice. You gotta go along with the whole scoop. As you go around, you gotta go with it all the time, all right? Yeah. And you get it out. Everybody needs help in one thing or another, but everybody's afraid to ask for it. Here, you ain't got no choice. We're gonna give it to you. If you walk out the door, that's because that's your decision, because here we're trying to give you the best training there is. Let me show you a few steps about that. You're sliding your children too much, okay? Come on here, come on this side, come on this side. You see this? You're sliding your chisel too much, okay? You don't, you're not coordinated. You don't have your line going across. Okay, you gotta go all the way across, always. See? That's your guideline. You gotta continue that all the time. Okay? Always going across. See, you do that, you set your square, it'll tell you how high you are from finishing. Don't forget your pencil line. Okay, you throw your pencil line, then you follow that. It gets you to the habit of going across all the time. Okay? It's not going in, it's going across all the time. I was born and raised in Spanish Harlem. It wasn't, it wasn't a good neighborhood, but very few people pull out of it. You know, I try real hard. This is where I ended up by pulling out of it. I've seen a lot of things happen, and I turned my face. I said, I'll go the other way. See, and it helped me a lot, because now I, you know, I achieved something, I'm worth something, I know my trade, I know what I'm doing. The tower is, which is a beautiful thing, it symbolizes in a very real way um, this community that's built it. I mean, it's that tower symbolizes Edgar Reyes and Teresa Robb and Eddie Pizarro and all of the young folks from here who built it. Well, when Edgar first started, he was young. He was the youngest guy here. And he also came from a bad background, you know? He went from foster home to foster home. And when he first came here, I used to take him home with me. To, like, you know, coach him, say, listen, you know, you don't, you gotta slow down and try to learn everything you can. Cause you know, someday you're gonna be good at it and you will be somebody. I think this looks like one of yours. One of your first bowl scenes. You got up there, don't look familiar? Yeah. It kind of look like mine, that one over there. All right. Do it look like the way you taught me? Only in the beginning stages. <laughs> you got better as you went on. I got to say, I learned a lot from you, man. Yeah, I sold it out uh, from you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> it's good to have somebody that I can depend on after all the stuff that I went through in my life. Yeah. That's good, man. I'll always be there to help you. I know. You and anybody else, you know that. I really feel proud about you. Hope a lot of guys learn from you. So I'm always willing to teach them, to let them know. There is somebody that cares. Just because somebody doesn't care at that time doesn't mean that life should end. Just swallow it for the moment. Things will get better. If not, you make them better. That's the way I always see it. If something is bad, it's because you made it back. Yeah, well, eventually when we finish the towers, they'll still clean the whole church, you know? Yeah. Everything will look good. Oh, pretty. that would look nice. The whole church? We might not get to see it, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess well, our, kids, we, our kids will we see it. We always dream, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Teach our kids. Our kids will be here doing it for us. Yeah. I can just see our kids now. Yeah. My daddy used to work there. Yeah, because that's right. Their kids and their kids. Yeah, I guess, you know, our, our trade is going to travel for a long There'll time. There'll be a few generations here. Yeah. I guess that's what it's all about, you know, making somebody Make it some, something out of somebody. You know, it's kind of hard, but it's, it's good. In the long run, they proud of themselves. Their self-respect, you know, it's just good for them. It is the best of times and the worst of times. A time to rethink who we are, what we do, and why we do it. A time to change the way we think about our relationships with others about the limits of our caring. This is a story about how a successful businesswoman is creating a new community. We are a global company. We're in 30, 40 countries. We've got 500 stores dotted around the world. To ignore the social needs or the environmental needs is to have such arrogance. 
I don't think any company is going to survive in the next 10, 20 years unless it has a vision that is beyond itself in the creation of profits. Does it, does it bubble when you wash your hair? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. well, not, not very much, but slightly, uh, slightly, almost. It's like chewing gum. Is there anything that the Indians would, could put on their skin to stop sunburn? Are you aware of anything like that? I want to do exactly what Christopher Columbus did. He came with his beads or his aloe or whatever and he traded. So I want to go into communities that I think need enormous amount of publicity in terms of surviving, which are now indigenous tribes. I want to look at wonderful things they can make for us, what we can purchase. This is one of the best raw materials we've found from the rainforest so far. That's right. What we're doing with Brazil nut is that we find that Brazil nut oil tends to function extremely well. In fact, I've got a sample there. What do you think to the smell of it? Because uh, it does tend to smell fairly strong. Like chip rat fry. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so we take forest, a look at ingredients that they use, or cultivated or domesticated, and we say, look, we'd like to purchase the Brazil nuts, Brazil nut milk, oil, which we can extract, and a couple of other oils. At the same time, we have our own charter of good behavior, which says we don't bring in any first world technology, any machinery. We don't change the culture at all. Yeah. Do you know why I love this one, this mm. Brazil nut? Because it is the first time that we've tried mm. to trade with a tribe. They are the ones that have found these products. They should have patent rights. The West, the big corporations would say, it's our patent rights, only we can have it. And you reward them, the primary producers, you don't reward anybody else, and you donate monies or whatever to the community rather than the individual. That's that bonding of a sense of community which I think is just delicious. Why is everybody always obsessed with a big? What is wrong with that noble one-person interaction or that one little orphanage in Romania? I mean, most of my friends will say, yeah, but it's only a drop in the ocean. So what? If you don't do that little drop in the ocean, you won't have that ripple effect. My idea was to send a team of, like a love team, to go over and just hold the babies, which was not done in Romania. For the first time in their lives, they have been held, held and kissed and stroked. I'm not at all interested in changing nations or cultures. I just want to have wonderful examples of the human spirit at play. <laughs> you know Easter um, on presentations as well? Staff in this company are allowed half a day a week on community service in their work time. Do whatever you want to do in the community that enhances your role in the community and you give something back. Oh, oh that's all right. <laughs> I know of several cases of firms who help very young mentally handicapped when they get to the age of 16. They're not pretty anymore. They're not attractive. They're not little things dancing around and looking nice. Suddenly they're grown up people who are a little bit ugly and a little bit off. And, but for a firm then to come in and help then is what we need. Do you like cats too? Yes. We were most surprised actually when Body Shop suggested that we could have some help. It's been tremendous to us. They seem to take so much and very few of them give back, especially large business. Have you? No, it's baby. Yeah. The firm quite willing to let us get involved in it because before I wasn't really interested. I didn't know anything about it. But by being here and being involved in it, you you get to know about it, so you're interested. It takes the edge off the work, which makes you that much more committed to your job. <laughs> You can't really miss me, can you? No. <laughs> if you show people the source of their power, and if you give them the experience which changes their values all in one, you actually change them as a citizen. Zen Garden. Zen Garden is a 
、えー、一つはその自然の大きな景色をその小さな庭の中に凝集してでそれが流れを表したりそれから山を表したり種を表したりしておりますでその中に我々はただ大きな自然をそのイミテーションとして作るだけでなくって。The garden is a place for seeing the connections between things. The garden offers an image of how different parts can create a harmonious whole. Observing how parts work together as a system has led one Japanese company, Omron, to design a new way of helping people work together. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. えー、創立者が、えー、オウムの、えー、太陽の家というそういう一つの新しい工場を作りましたでその中では新しいそういうオートメーションの技術とを生かすことで、えー、それぞれの人が持っている能力を最大限に発揮できるようなそういうあの会社を作ったんですね。The idea is to create a community of workers where each person, regardless of physical limitations, can be useful, can produce something. Each machine has been designed to increase the ability of the person who uses it. Creativity is about helping others. This is a story about the great photographer Dorothea Lang. In March 1936, she had been out on the road for a month alone. It was late winter, the weather still raw and miserable. It was raining as she drove north for home. Her camera bags were packed. Then, out of the corner of her eye, she saw a sign flick by Pea Pickers Camp. She didn't want to stop, but something inside her made her stop. I was following instinct, not reason, she recalled later. I drove into that wet and soggy camp and parked my car like a homing pigeon. I saw and approached a hungry and desperate mother as if drawn by a magnet. I do not remember how I explained my presence or my camera to her, but I do remember she asked me no questions. Dorothea says, I did not ask her name or her history. She told me her age, that she was 32. She said they had been living on frozen vegetables from the surrounding fields and birds that the children killed. She had just sold the tires from her car to buy food. There she sat in that lean to tent with her children huddled around her and seemed to know that my pictures might help her, and so she helped me. There was a sort of equality about it. Dorothea could not have known it then, but on this field trip, she made one of the great American photographs called Migrant Mother. Her picture was rushed to newspapers all over the country. It stirred the consciousness of Americans and help finally came to the hungry migrant workers. It's tough to be creative about tackling the problems of life if you feel powerless, if you're angry at yourself and where life has put you. Creativity comes from the inner being of the person. And if that inner being lacks confidence and hope, even life's most basic acts, even that act of raising your own child, is without spirit. This is a story about one woman's creative idea to help other Hispanic women in San Antonio, Texas. I grew up in this community, and、uh, it didn't take long to compare the type of rearing that I went through or the strength that my own mother had. 
trying to raise a family of eight children. I had to ask myself, why is it that my own mother was able to move forward and overcome many, many obstacles, but also raise her children, who have turned out okay? And to me, it, it made me compare and see that my own mother never lost that spirit, that sense of hope. And what I started seeing around me is that many of these children were not receiving those kinds of encouragement that a parent gives a child is so critical for future growth and development. <laughs> if we want the parents to help their children, to help themselves, and to, to strengthen the community in which they live, the neighborhood, it all starts with realizing that they do not have to live in the rut they live in, that they don't have to stay in the status quo. One of the greatest elements of our program, Vavon said, is that we have to reach the person's soul, how they feel about themselves. We have to change the negative to a positive. We have to rekindle that spirit that basically was lost for whatever reason it is. Start with the strengths that they have, and the basic strength is that they love their children. Many of these parents are lacking the basic knowledge in child growth and development. This is something that must be learned. Many of them did not give the proper nurturance themselves as children, and this is what we found out in many of the cases. What color of towel is this? White. What shape? Square. Let's see, let's pull some of those pegs out and tell us some more about them. That's going to help those fingers get big and strong. You can be able to do a lot more with those fingers. I'm sure to put them in the basket. Let's put them in the basket. In the basket. Let's see some of this shape. What is that? A circle. A well, my mom did not tell me that she loved me. She did not cuddle me. She did not praise me. She discouraged me from furthering my education. I won't know what will be of me if I don't go out there and see what's on the other side. It's real important that you realize and see these basic shapes in the environment of your child, and you talk about the kinds of things that they can see every day, and you point out circle, square, and triangle. The making of the toys is critical because they not only are using the toys as the tools to get those children ready for school by teaching them the concepts and skills, but that they've created something that in turn builds their self-esteem. They start realizing, uh-huh, I can do things. I can produce, I can create, I can do something good. I can get out of wherever I'm at. You like this puzzle? It's got lots of color, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, you can get a chance to try it too, okay? But first let's talk about about this shape right here. No, round circle. The round circle and what what goes around the circle? We have been going into the homes and looking at you and your children work together and now's a big day. We're going to see what we're really learning in class to see if you're really practicing. And uh, Anita, you're going to be the first one. But I want us to see what positive attention she's giving her child so that her child can learn better. I want you to see if she smiles, if she hugs, or if she encourages the child to keep on learning. Being a parent does not come natural. One has to learn the skill proper role models, get the tools one needs. Those children have a much better opportunity not only to meet with academic success, but to become who they're supposed to become if they have that proper foundation. Sylvia, did you notice how her attitude was? She was trying, she tried her best, trying her best to help her kids learn about. I saw something in this film video that I don't see in my kids. What? That her kids can share. Okay. And they don't share. What can the rest of you tell her about that? And two, it's hard for a child to share because everything is mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're just learning at that time, I think, because I went through that. With Avance basically is the catalyst. We all need a catalyst to unlock those negative feelings, those barriers, those 
perceptions, those obstacles, so that we can move forward as individuals, as parents, as community residents, you know. And if we help enough individuals, but by the kind of program, or by kind of intervention or setting that we provide for them, then we will have stronger families and better communities and a better nation. And you're saying you've all become teachers for your children. Now, what have you become for yourself? What have you learned about yourself uh, attending the classes at Avance? That we can accomplish anything we want. Good. We can be anything we want. I didn't think I had it in me to create something better or something especially for my son, you know. You, you start doing something and then all of a sudden you put more into it, more of, of yourself into it. I um, signed up for the GD classes too. Even though I still want to get my diploma, but whichever comes first, I'll take. And I want to go on to college too, but I want to go for lawyer's aid. I graduated from Alonso in parenting classes this year. And um, hopefully after my GED, I'll be going to college. And yeah. What are you going to do in college? I want to go for nursing. Wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I can't believe I, you know, I was all day at home just watching all my children and wanting <laughs> to live and, you know, yeah, I what happened. All, I saw all of those every day. I know. Now, when I, whenever I stay home, you know, I don't have time to look at TV. Mm-hmm. I don't because whenever I do stay home, you know, I'm keeping busy doing things or reading. I like to read a lot. My dad always, uh, now that I tell him that I'm working in the office, you know, in air conditioning, I don't feel the heat. <laughs> you know, he he says, I mean, he says, uh, to picture you, mija, you know, he calls me mija, uh, when you were five, six years old, working out in the fields, you mm-hmm. know, picking strawberries. Uh, we used to migrant, go be migrant workers. And he, he says that he wouldn't have pictured me you know, in the future like this, the whole concept of, you know, achievement, you know, it's great. And you get to, you know, you get to say, I mean, I can do it, and you, anybody can. Creativity is not being afraid anymore. Creativity is cutting holes to see through. Creativity is singing in your own key. In, in some respects, we are in a, a phenomenal position to produce a really great period of creativity. There's very few countries on this planet that have the diversity that we do. Uh, we have a, a major population from Africa, major populations uh, that are Hispanic origin. Uh, we still have a very active uh, Native American culture. Uh, we have a huge infusion from the Pacific Ocean and from Southeast Asia and Japan and China. We have this diversity here, and right now it's sort of in these little separate pockets and not fully assimilated into a unified culture. That means different people coming together, man and God coming together, God and the universe coming together. I mean, the communion of all things. I mean, that's the sort of image of heaven in which we are all in this most intimate sharing and relationship and actually entering into each other's lives. If we can find some means to bring everybody in into a unified vision and a unified view of what it means to be American, I think we could be one of the most creative nations in the world. I think this is an asset that we have. It's unexploited, and therefore it's a tremendous potential for our nation. Creation and community and symbiosis and diversity and interdependence are all the words that that work together. You can't take any one of those words out of that equation and have a community. The arts have been one of the best ways in order to help uh, New Yorkers in particular um, resolve their differences and to bring various communities together so that we can share uh, in the purpose of making New York a better place, you know, and also um, building our culture.
Wallace Sedone Jondo actually means the dance of servants or slaves and the dance of freedom. We use this particular piece to celebrate the breaking of anything that holds our young people or our particular community here in a state of bondage. Poor education, poor housing, disease, illness, a relationship that you know you can't, can't quite figure out, you know, how to shape it to make it work for you. And we have an inability to communicate either with the boss or other workers to create a sense of rhythm and a sense of happiness within that, in that job. Those are forms of bondage. break and the feet open up and the arms become bigger and wilder and it symbolizes breaking chains or breaking bondage. One of the wonderful things that takes place within folk tradition, particularly African tradition, is that people actually pray for what they want to take place within the human spirit and in society through music and dance and rhythm. In the breaking of those chains, it's a kind of prayer that we are offering um, our young people, our elders, the New York community, and through the mission of the cathedral in terms of urban ministry, so that one of the things that happens or can happen with every individual is that if we utilize our creativity, if we utilize the essence that God gave every single one of us, which was to try to resolve our conflict by digging deep inside the creative center of who we are and utilizing our minds, the arts, writing, uh, poetry, dance, movement. community by first going to battle with the things that hold us at bay with inside ourselves. Within us all the time, we are fighting the battles of our own thought, of our own contradictions. So right now, in order to celebrate our differences, and at the same time, maybe resolve them and bring them together. Come on, let's let's work this dance of celebration. I don't know that the art solves everything, but it definitely becomes an alternative. Um, what we have found is that the introduction of other cultures to other people, especially through their creative art forms, create a better understanding of people and bring people together. Creativity is shaking hands with tomorrow. God's name is creativity. God's name is compassion.